Hey, welcome to the Original Brew Collective Podcast. We are on episode number five. Episode five. My all-time favorite number. So. Why? <laughs> my, it's my favorite number because I was, I was number five, and I didn't think you'd ask, um, in sports that growing up. Fair question, I thought. Yeah, it is. It is. Uh, in every single sport mm. I ever played. And that's I a was, very valid reason. I was always number five, so nostalgia. Nostalgic reason. Mm. So you'll never forget this episode. I'll never forget this wow. one is going to go down. This is a big episode. This is a big episode. My favorite. A lot to live up to now. Yeah. Because we're just <laughs> starting. So we'll see how this goes. Yeah. It'll go good. Um, well, so if you are just... It'll, it'll go, go well. It'll go well. <laughs> <laughs> if you are just tuning in with us, each episode we review one beer on our episode and then we discuss a variety of topics that we call our brewery talk. Yep. And that's just t- stuff that you talk about going to a brewery with your mm-hmm. friends or just sitting around drinking with friends. Um, brewery talk. So we talk about that and then one beer. And before we get into the review of the beer, we talk about three different questions each week and we're going to get get right into it. So yeah. Robert, the first question is, what is the last beer that you drank? The last beer that I had was Smoochberry. You had Atlanta. it. Yeah, nice. I had it. Um, if you listen to our previous episodes, you were aware that Ben and I were going to, uh, it's from Moxa Brewing Company. They were releasing it um, in advance so a little while ago in advance for Valentine's Day. And so we uh, went in and got some together and um, split it, and I finally cracked one of mine open. Nice. Very good. It's a sour blonde, um, 5% ABV, um, pours a rich, like darker uh, pink. Mm-hmm. Um, really good. Really good. Uh, this is the second time they've released it. Um, it's possible that the first batch was just raspberry. Um, not 100% sure. I, I, that's what I believe. But this round two at least had raspberry and dragon fruit. Um, I personally thought it might have been a little bit better this time around. Hmm. Um, from what I've been told um, from people who have had it, I, yeah. I missed out on the first one, but that's what I'm hearing. So I don't believe, I mean, I believe <laughs> this one's really good, mm-hmm. um, but it was very good. Very good sour um, from Moxa. The thing that I was, and I haven't tried it yet, but the thing that I was excited about was the dragon fruit in it. And I, yeah. I mentioned that, but that just something different, you mm-hmm. know, and to add that to it, I'm excited to taste it. Yeah. So. Yeah. Yeah. Sweet. So the, the last beer that I had was, it was actually my second beer from this brewery called Bike Dog Brewing, and they're in West Sacramento, I believe. And it was called Defender of the Haze. It's a pretty, it's a pretty new release that they just came out with. And I actually really enjoyed it. And mm. it was just, a, I believe it was an, like a hazy American IPA. Oh, really? Yeah. <laughs> and it was, um, it was really juicy. And it was like a it was very hazy, very hazy, and it was like a yellow golden, and I, I really liked it, and tropical notes on it, and smooth finish, and... It wasn't I, bitter at all? It was, like, as I kept drinking it, but okay. up front, it wasn't too bitter, and it was pretty... Yeah, it wasn't too, like, danky, because you... Yeah, with American IPAs, I mm-hmm. think those sometimes are kind of bitter, but I don't know. I don't think I taste bitter as much as other people do, though, because I remember one time we were drinking a beer and you guys were like this is so bitter and I was like I don't know it doesn't seem yeah. that bitter to me so it could have been to other people but I wasn't getting too that much was bitter. that was the beer what was referring that? to is blind pig from Russia oh Europe. yeah yeah we were able to get um some bottles of blind pig uh. um, which is not easy to come by and yeah we got I mean that was very bitter mm-hmm. not, like to me and my wife and even Jessica was mm-hmm. like wow it's really bitter mm-hmm. um and Ben didn't really pick up on the bitterness as much as we I did. didn't but yeah, that's normal for people, you know, you just pick up on different notes of different things. Mm-hmm. So. so that one could have been, I just wasn't like, it, mm-hmm. w- that didn't stand out to me. That was yeah. weird. But it was good. I really liked it. I'd, I'd definitely get it again. Um, so second question, mm-hmm. what is the last brewery that you went to? Last brewery, and I'm going to save us time because it was the same. Oh, yeah, time. it was the, yeah, it we was, did the. Uh, literally the other day, we, uh-huh. went, we did, uh, we went out to Elk Grove, California. There's a, a pocket of breweries over there. Um, and so the one we finished at was flat, flatlands, flatland brewing, flatland brewing in yeah. Elk Grove, California. Great beer. Um, yeah, great environment. Um, it's a little bit smaller, but, um, I like it. Good beer. Um, good people that work there that own it. Mm-hmm. I recommend it. I know this is, area. this isn't, I mean, I really like this is kind of random, but I really like the logo too. They have a super logo cool is really logo cool. and really cool, like glassware and everything. I've, I don't know why it like went over my head that we went there together. I think I was yeah. just in the in the mode of like asking the questions. If you're but. not familiar with Flatland, um, but you are familiar with Pure uh, Project Brewing, uh, that's one way to describe their label. I guess it's like the simplicity of Pure's label is um, similar in a way to it, very similar yeah. actually. Yeah, it is really to similar. Flatlands. Um, they're both really cool. They're very they're pretty similar. Not like 
you, I wouldn't confuse the two, um, but similar style and simplicity. Mm-hmm. Uh, but yeah, you're right. They had a, re- a really cool variety of glassware that you could purchase, and their logo was really cool. Yeah, it was awesome. Yeah, Oak Grove, they have, they have good breweries out there, mm-hmm. and we were just going all the different ones. That was fun. Yeah, yeah, it's a good little area to, to hop around because they're, they're all kind of within that, like I said, a little pocket. Mm-hmm. So Yeah. So the third question mm-hmm. is what is the last, or what is the beer you're looking forward to trying next? That's a good question. You go first. Okay, the beer, the beer, because <laughs> uh, I have the beer that I'm looking forward to trying next is um, by the Booth Brewing, and I believe it's called Two Face, and I can't rem- I it's it's in my fridge right now, and it's a a Northeast Double IPA, and it's called Two Face because they came out with um, a Northeast and then also a West Coast mm. version of it. That's really cool. I, I cannot. That. I want to say like the Booth Man for some reason is like the Northeasts hazy's name Mm -hmm. but i can't remember but um yeah so they came out with like two different versions of it and i think they were like challenging people to see like which one they liked better which i thought was like that's kind of fun yeah you know and i've been seeing it a lot like the um the candle i just haven't picked one up yet and so i'm excited to try it i've been hearing quite a bit about the booth brewing and um i'm not exactly sure like where they came from but i know that they have a brewery in eureka california that's okay so yeah i'm really really excited to try it it's a double so Cool. Yeah. Um, uh, so the one I had to, sorry, I had to think about it. I was like, what am I? <laughs> it like, happens. There's so what, many. There's so many. What do I already have in my fridge? What am I looking to get my hands on? Mm-hmm. Um, I did recently see, and Ben actually filled me in on this, um, that his local bottle shop um, got device brewing pineapple cannon. Mm-hmm. And so um, I'm gonna looking yeah, to pick up some too. of that. I'm really excited about that. It's not the first time they've released that, uh, but it will be my first time having it. Um, so it's just a pineapple um, New England IPA that I'm excited about getting my hands on. That one looks really good. Yeah. I'm excited to try the that reviews one. reviews I've read, too, about that one. I typically don't look at reviews in advance. I don't like to. I kind of want to just kind of go into it a little blind, um, aside from knowing the, the reputation of the brewery itself. But <clears throat> So I, I what I have read about this one now, because um, I did happen to look at reviews, was, they were pretty solid. It had good ratings, and people were talking about the, was, the pineapple. It really helped holds up to its name mm-hmm. as far as like you know the flavor and everything so yeah. i'm excited and my i love pineapple yeah me too just and even like in beers too and so when i i don't know i'm just expecting like a pineapple punch to the face drinking that one yeah. <laughs> which well, I'm pineapple cannon, so. yeah <laughs> so i think it'll be really good so i'm excited yeah. about that one too yeah yeah um what are we what are we drinking today yeah today we are going to be drinking our first beer um that we've ever gotten in cans um from from burning barrel uh, brewing company and it's called Cashmere King. I haven't had anything. Is that from right? Cashmere Girl. King. Yeah, Cashmere yeah. King. Yeah, um, with Citra and Cashmere hops. Mm-hmm. And so very excited about this one. I was able to go there when they first opened up. Um, I'm planning to go back soon. Um, but yeah, this will be my first experience since going to the brewery. And have you had them before? I haven't. Right, I've never had them before. Okay. I was just yeah. I'm. I've want to try it though. Yeah. Well, really today's good. the day. Today's you know, we're the day. minutes minutes away or less, maybe seconds. So seconds. Let's let's crack this open. Let's do it, man. Yeah. So for those of you who are just listening and not currently watching with us on YouTube right now, we're about to be cracking open Cashmere King from Burning Barrel Brewing Company in Rancho Cordova, California. This beer is 8.1 ABV. It's a double cloudy IPA. Really cool can art, red label with a skull with hops in the eyes, one golden tooth, and a crown on its head. All right, so now that we have the beer poured, this is Cashmere King once again from Burning Barrel Brewing Company. And if you take a look at it, it looks like, I mean, definitely orange. It's not 100% opaque. You know, I could see my hand a little bit through it, but definitely this is not, you know, West Coast clear. Mm-hmm. It's more of a pretty solid orange, like a tangerine orange. It is, yeah. It's a pretty good way to describe it. Let's see what we get on the nose. Well, before we do that, uh, we did want to point out the head retention on this one wasn't, didn't last as long, um, wasn't as strong as I feel like we're used to seeing on some of the other beers that we've reviewed so far. Um, even, and even before like putting it to the, like I can smell it from here. Yes, but that is one thing. you I can definitely pick up smell already. When we cracked it open, Yeah. definitely started smelling it already. Um, and like Ben said, yeah, just holding our glass, you know, a foot <laughs> I can away from face, we can just, it. it smells delicious. Mm-hmm. I mean, let's see what we get. Yeah. Oh my goodness. Uh, tangerine. Citrus. Kind of ma- orange I kinda peel. S- yeah, orange. I was gonna say orange and kind of mango. Yeah. The sweetness of mango. I Almost. Get that. Gra- I think grapefruit too. 
I think I'm smelling some grapefruit in there. I'm just getting a lot of tangerine on this one. It's like when you open up tan- tangerines, you peel them into like the little wedges, right? Mm-hmm. Like, yeah. So mm-hmm. I'm getting like, it smells like right when you like crack one open and you start like yeah. breaking out the wedges, like that smell of a fresh tangerine. It's kind of sweet too. Yeah. It smells kind of sweet. Let's try it. Let's try it. That's pretty, that's good. I'm getting a lot of tangerine. I am too. Yeah. I taste it like the citrusy orange. Yeah, definitely. I mean, orange, orange peel, tangerine. I'm getting a lot of tangerine more for me, more, a little more than, the, a lot more in the orange. Um, this is very good. It is. I was very, um, very excited to try this one because I realized after we drank in one of our previous episodes, we drank Diamond Dust by Pure Project Brewing. Mm-hmm. And I real I, I was wondering why it was so smooth and like, so it almost to me, almost creamy. And, um, I thought, and then I looked it up after and there was cashmere hops in it. Mm-hmm. And I was like, oh, maybe it's that maybe it's like, and I feel like I kind of get that same, the same mouthfeel on this one. Like the yeah. cashmere hops are making it like kind of, kind of creamy. Yeah. To me. I was actually going to say, this is definitely like a, a little bit of a, a medium maybe on the heavier side. Um, I would say it's leaning for me towards medium, a little bit mouthfeel. I think that's also because I was going into this with anticipation that it was going to have a heavier mouthfeel because this can, and I'm not sure if all of burning barrels cans do this, but it does give you a, an indicator on the mouthfeel. So a range from thin to thick, and it's just one away from being maxed out on the thick. Oh really? Yeah. And so I was expecting it to be, you know, really heavy on the Mm. mouthfeel. Um, it wasn't as heavy as I would have expected. Um, but it's, it's solid. Like if they didn't have, I think if they didn't have that on the can, I wouldn't have thought that. And so I would have, you know, had no preconceived idea of what to expect. And so mm-hmm. I think this is solid, you know, that aside, I think that the mouthfeel is really good at some point. Yeah, it is. Um, yeah, I, I would, I would agree. The mouthfeel for me has, is medium. And then, um, it also is kind of, kind of light carbonation as well. Not super heavy carbonation on it, but mm-hmm. it's, it's good. It's Yeah. Yeah, and for 8.1, it's hidden really well. So if you are really into, I would highly recommend this beer if you're really into, like, citrus. Um, Not just, like, you know, a standard. uh, We've been having a lot of New England styles lately, right? And so you get some citrus in there, um, a lot of tropical. But if you really like to focus in on that citrus, this is a really good beer for that. Mm -hmm. It's packed with citrus. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's really, it's good. Like I said, orange and tangerine. A lot of tangerine. This is a really good beer. If you're into citrus. So for brewery talk today, um, I'm sure you're all, if you've listened with us before, you're familiar that um, every episode we do brewery talk. And so this week, Ben knows nothing. He knows, he knows the theme. You know Uh, what I was, you know what I just realized? hmm. Um, Because, well, yeah, the theme is going, and I don't know any of the questions, but the theme is firsts. And this is my first beer from Burning Barrel. Hey. We didn't even. Kismet. We didn't even plan that. I think kismet makes sense. I don't never know. I've that. never heard that ever. You've never heard the word kismet? I've never heard that before. I, I've heard it. Never <laughs> used it. So this is... Hey, that's my first time what? saying kismet. We're not even... This is crazy. Oh my gosh. This first. is destiny. First, man. Okay. So I made a list of first questions. Um, I'm nervous. They're not bad. No, okay. they're they're pretty appropriate. Okay. That's yeah. good. Um, we'll start off with, uh, with an easy one. So what was... And I'm going to be using my phone. So if you're watching with this, you'll see me kind of looking off my phone. I didn't memorize, you know all of these questions um i don't think it was necessary so don't mm-hmm. don't judge me i don't care <laughs> i don't judge um you. ben and i'll answer this as well what was your first craft beer Ooh, that's that's hard man that's a hard i want i don't know so my first craft beer i can answer first and you can think about okay, it. okay okay so my first craft beer that i ever had was sierra nevada pale ale okay and i, I hated mind. it i know why um, <laughs> I, I, so I always went back and forth. Was it Lagunitas, their standard IPA, or was it a Sierra Nevada? And, you know, I thought about it long and hard and I'm pretty sure it, it was Sierra Nevada. I did not like it. I was, it, you know, obviously it's a, it's hot packed and just like a kick in the face if you're not used to craft beer or, you know, West coast or just hoppy, um, Americans or any, any sort of like really hoppy beers. Um, so I used to really not like it. Um, and now when I'm with, you know, at a family event or something and someone brings, you know, 
some beer from the store, I, I often, more often than not, I feel like there's going to be a uh, Sierra Nevada there. And so uh, I actually, not too long ago, probably a month ago, I had um, Sierra Nevada's Pale Ale, and I hadn't had, had it in a while. And I was surprised. Hmm. It was a good beer, yeah. Um, I, like I said, I didn't like it when I first had it. It was, and then I went to Lagunitas, and then from there, then I really started venturing into, you know, local brews and everything. Um, this was years ago. I was, you know, freshly 21 at that time. Um, but yeah, so my first was Sierra Nevada, and I definitely have a, a big, strong appreciation for them now. Yeah. Um, as a brewery, I mean, I, they kick butt. They sold, you know, those IPAs before people even knew they wanted them. Mm-hmm. So much respect to them. Uh, but yeah, yeah even Nevada. like Resilience IPA, been a and, campfire. Yeah, absolutely. So they cool. started such a cool movement with Resilience. They raised so much money too. Millions. Yeah, millions. Do you know the number on that? I've. 16 million is coming to mind, That's but crazy. that might be So wrong. if you're not familiar with re- the Resilience, um, resili- it was Resilience IPA. It was something that Sierra Nevada started for um, the campfire mm-hmm. relief program. So that fire they had um, in Northern California, um, it was just in California, correct? Yeah. Yeah. Paradise, California. Uh, right. Yeah. Like consumed the city, entire city of Paradise. Um, the photos are just devastating. Um, but uh, Sierra Nevada started... Uh, they created this recipe for this IPA that they hadn't brewed before, and they called it Resilience IPA. And 100% of the proceeds went to the campfire so relief, cool. which is really badass. And then they had, um, they sent that recipe out. They sent out letters and the recipe to uh, breweries all over the world, actually. And so there were breweries overseas that brewed it. Um, an insane amount of breweries in the U.S. brewed it. That's so and, cool, man. And, all, and the, the rule was all proceeds go to campfire relief. Mm-hmm. Anyways, we got off on a big tangent. That's but, awesome, though. Yeah, it was really cool. I don't know if you're going to come by Resilience anymore because um, it was, you know, it was a little while ago at this point, you know, a few months. Um, and so I, I would imagine a lot of the places are sold out of it. But mm-hmm. it, was, it was a decent beer. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it was pretty good. Yeah. Anyways, do you know what your first craft beer was? Yes. So I'm sure that there were some that I drank like on tap going out before this one, but mm-hmm. ones that I just can't recall and was just ordering based off of what I saw. But the one that I can specifically remember and was um, an Alaskan, the like Alaskan Amber. I liked Alaskan Amber. I did too. I, remember, I used to drink that. Because I wasn't really super, that. at first, I mean, I feel like you kind of have to get used to, I mean, IPAs and mm-hmm. all those all those different flavors and stuff. So um, I was drinking more light beers at yeah. first. And so the one of, my, one of our friends recommended that I got the Amber. And we were actually at a bar in Alaska and he oh was really? Like, yeah, it was hmm. when we went on That's a cruise cool. to Alaska, and he was like, "You should get the Alaskan Amber," and I got it, and I was like, "Oh, this is actually pretty good." And mm-hmm. then, so that was that's like the one that I remember. Yeah. So yeah, I don't think I I've been to Alaska before, and I don't think I went to uh, any of the breweries. It wasn't a brewery; it was just a bar. But yeah, I went to a bar. I went to a couple, I think. Mm-hmm. Um, I was in Homer, Alaska, actually, for a wedding, and we got to travel around a little bit, and we went to what was it called? Something Dog. By Red Dog? No. Oh, that's in Juno, I think. Yeah. Eh, doesn't matter. <laughs> doesn't matter. Sorry, everyone. Um, oh, so what is the first? What is the first brewery that you ever visited? First brewery that I ever visited. So mine was Knee Deep Brewing Company in Auburn. Mm-hmm. Um, and their like flagship IPA really is is a breaking bud. Um, it got pretty popular, especially when uh, I don't know if I'm, uh, yeah, when Fox. Um, it's Fox, Sony. right? Owns, Sony, who owns Breaking Breaking Bad, wrote them a cease and desist mm-hmm. after years of knee deep. That was crazy. You know, gaining popularity with this beer. Yeah. And so they got a cease and desist. I don't know what the status of that is. And it was because of the can art. Yeah, because the, like, the name and the can art was obviously a spin on a Breaking take on Bad. Breaking Bad. Yeah. But it's a solid. If you like West Coast and you haven't had it, it's a really solid. It's really easy to find mm-hmm. um, in our area. You can go to the local grocery store and get it. But it's mm-hmm. a solid West Coast. Mm-hmm. It's a really good West Coast. IPA. So the first first brewery that I went to or I've been to was actually when I was living in Washington. I'm pretty sure that's mm-hmm. what it was. And there was a brewery in um, Gig Harbor, Washington called Seven Seas Brewing. And I just remember that was, yeah, that was the first brewery that Seven I went Seas. to because I knew that you guys had been starting to go to breweries when I moved yeah. to like to Knee Deep and everything. And so Seven Seas, that was my first one. Mm-hmm. It was pretty good. It had some solid beers. I remember your first time going to Needy actually. We were, I was with you, and I was like, you and I got breaking try, like, our, our California craft. Yeah. And no disrespect to Washington at all, <laughs> but um, I was just, like, in love with what was going on. It was it was right when the Sacramento 
brewery I scene started like booming. I feel like specifically our area, which is the Sacramento area is where we live, mm. is so good. Yeah. We have so many good is. breweries here. We really do. Um, next question. All right. What was your first job? My first job was Cold Stone Creamery. <laughs> I worked at Cold Stone Creamery, and I was just... We were called stone workers, and so we would make the ice cream. I'm sure a lot of people have gone to Cold Stone, and so we'd do like all the mixing and stuff. And we were, I worked at Cold Stone when we still had to sing. I was about to ask that. Yeah. So you, when you tip someone at Cold Stone, I don't know. I don't, if know, still a I don't thing. know if it's still a thing. Whenever they would get a, t- the employees got a tip in their tip jar, they were required to sing a song. Mm-hmm. So, without further ado, Ben, take it away. What was it? Oh my god, <laughs> I do remember one. <laughs> How long is it? It's very, um, it's probably too long. Okay. Well, we'll make it too long. <laughs> um, if we get enough requests, um, whether it be, I you know, on the the, in the comments of this, of this video uh-huh. or on the day we post, cause on social media, when we release our, our podcasts, we also post a photo for it and announce that, Hey, podcast is up. Go check it out. If we get enough requests. I, you know what? I tell you, I, I need to see at I least didn't, one I request. didn't agree to this by the way, but well, we'll see. Uh, <laughs> I'll do you know, it. let's get a request. Uh, at least one, and I think I said that does it. So whether that be in the comment on YouTube, yeah, or, man, I'll do it, or on social media, I'll do it. <laughs> I'd, love to, I'd love to hear this. <laughs> so my first job was a subway sandwich really? shop. Really? Yeah. So my brother what? worked there. I have an older brother, and he worked there, and he's the one who got me the job. I had to get a workers permit because Dude, I was my fifteen older and a brother half. Got me the job at Coldstone. Nice man. Wow. Um, he had to get me, or I had to get a workers permit. I was fifteen and a half. Um, it was over summer. Showed up on my first day, and I was given in advance, just like, here's a list of sandwiches, here's the ingredients, memorize it. And so I show up for my first day, and they're like, all right, let's make sandwiches. And I was expecting, like, no training, anything, just they gave me the list, they're like, all right, learn how to remember what goes in this. And that was it. And so it was super stressful. I ended up working a total of two and a half hours, and then I didn't work there anymore. Oh, really? (laughs) Yeah. Oh, my gosh. It was just so stressful, and I was like, hey, like... This is I don't feel well. Um, I think I'm going to take my break and just, I need some fresh air because I was getting super stressed out because the the boss at the time at that location was not very pleasant to mm-hmm. work with. Um, and I knew that going in. Um, my brother had warned me and yeah, she was pretty, pretty harsh. That's crazy. And so she sat outside with me and she's like, you need to decide what the, she was using some profanity. No F way. you want to do. Like you come back and work for me tomorrow. Or you come back when you're 16. I was like, yeah, I'll come back when I'm 16. Mm -hmm. And then I left. And I was like, nope, not going back there. Wow. Yeah. That's not cool. Yeah. So two and a half hours, which I feel like would be, like, would reflect, like, oh, not good work ethic. But the next job I got after that, I had for almost nine years. Mm -hmm. So suck it. Strong work ethic. (laughs) Yeah. Um, That's funny. Those Our jobs were, like, kind of similar in -hmm. a way. Like, Subway, you're... I just can't work. I I, I mean, that was a learning experience. I cannot work with food. Yeah. It just, nope. No people way. get people get hangry, man. Yeah, there was. I mean, I remember specifically. There were some really nice um, individuals that came in. They were like really understanding. They're like, "Oh, it's your first day. Like, take your time," and and that like helped. But really, what it was was the manager. Yeah. Um, at the time, was she was brutal. That's a bummer. Yeah, and so that was like stressing me out big time. But anyways, that was first jobs. So, what was your first as a child first sleepover or night away from home <laughs> without like your family? So sleepover, yeah. I think it was probably when I, the first one that comes to mind, there might have been another one, but was when I was in third, fourth grade maybe, mm-hmm. and it was in Santa Barbara, and it was at my friend's house, and mm-hmm. it was it was fun. How'd it go? It was good. I, I don't, I know sometimes kids like get scared and want to go home, but I don't think I did, but I do <laughs> remember at this, at his house, he had a basketball hoop in mm-hmm. his, in his driveway, and we were just kind of, we were kind of messing around, you know, just, mm-hmm. just playing basketball. And I remember I like, I threw the ball really hard at the backboard and it, it bounced off the backboard and hit their front door and their door had like a decorative like window on it oh, and no. it shattered the window. <laughs> <laughs> and like his dad came out and was, was this like, like the, the day the that night was, you spent the night or the night, the morning after when you woke up? It was, I don't remember. I think it was, like I was there all day. And so then I still spent the night. Oh wow. And they, um. Yeah, he was like, what happened? I don't know. <laughs> like, I like, oh, my gosh. You're lucky it didn't poison you. For I know. I know. That's so, so funny. Yeah. So that one, yeah, that was the first one that I remember. Yeah. You know? It's funny you say uh, that they, you know, a lot of kids get upset their first time because mm-hmm. mine was, I think I was in first grade. Mm-hmm. It was my best friend at the time. His name was Thomas. And it was his birthday. And he didn't live far at all. He 
kind of live down the street almost. Um, it's just like a few turns away and then very like the connecting neighborhood. And yeah, I cried that night. Aww. I think I think I just had to call little I, Robert. <laughs> how old how old are you in first grade? Six, like or seven. 6 or 7. I I I didn't like wasn't like weeping, but I got upset and then I was like I just wanted to call and say good night to my parents. <laughs> but then the next morning I got up and we played N64 and yeah. we skipped school. Um, I remember that. Um, cause, which seems really odd. Why would we have a sleepover on a weekend? I think because his birthday fell during the week. And what first graders skip school? Like, did you guys just not go? <laughs> like, what the? We just, I mean, our, our your my parents mom knew. gave me the okay. His parents okay. okay. But I remember the other kids had to leave, so they all had to go in. But we, I didn't have to. Like, my parents let me skip school that day. I mean, it's first Weird. grade. Like, yeah. what are you gonna miss out on coloring? Yeah, probably. So not too much. Yeah. So yeah. But then after that. I love slick hours. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. There's no more fun. tears for me. <laughs> That's, you got it out of the way. Who was your first childhood crush? Ooh, I know my my first childhood crush. Should I say last name? Probably not. No, my I'm first. The first. <laughs> my first childhood crush, and we, um, the crush became my girlfriend, and so that was. Oh wait, I don't. I'll I'll say the one that came to mind first because there was one when I was like five. That counts. Okay, so it was when I was five. It was my next door neighbor, mm-hmm. and I'm pretty sure her name. Gosh, I don't remember her name. I want to say, like, Emily or Nikki, but those are both so different. Yeah. But it was, like, one of those <laughs> names, and she was my she was my next-door neighbor. I was five years old living in, in Chicago, and she I went over, and she wanted to play house, and we were playing house, and she kissed me on the cheek. Damn. Yep. She's moving fast. <laughs> she was. Nikki. She, I think it was Nikki. Okay. I think it was Nikki. So that was my first. I really liked her. Quite a bit. My first crush, and you know it's really funny. I don't remember her name. Okay, so we're both. All I re- okay, so I was it was in kindergarten, and it was when like all the kids, the boys would chase the girls, the girls would chase the boys, and uh, I I remember just playing that all the time with her. Um, don't remember her name, but I remember as a child in kindergarten. So what are you five? Mm-hmm. I thought she looked like Princess Jasmine. Oh yeah, and so I was like, <laughs> wow, this girl is beautiful. Yeah, <laughs> and so. Uh, I don't know if I ever saw her after kindergarten, so I don't know if she switched schools or what. But mm-hmm. that could have changed my fate, you know? Yeah, <laughs> definitely. <laughs> no, I can't. I, honestly, I can't even remember her, what her name was, though. Just but say yeah, Jas- was, Jasmine. Jasmine. Her, her name, name was, was Jasmine. Jasmine. Princess Jasmine. Princess Jasmine. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Yeah. All right, next question is, when was the first time you shaved? This one... Do you remember? How, what, like, what, when were you... How old were well, you? Well, I, I think I was probably, like... 13 or 14 mm. the first time I shaved maybe not what grade is that it's like I, freshman year I, I don't I, don't, I do I don't think recall. I th- actually think it was my freshman year was the first time I shaved and I, I actually I can't grow like a full beard which I'm super like bummed about uh, but, yeah well I, I okay that's funny because my first time shaving and this, maybe this is why I can grow like a decent beard I first shaved in seventh grade Oh, really? Yeah, but it wasn't obviously a full beard. It was like the little peach fuzz mm-hmm. stash, but it was like much overdue. I probably could have started in sixth. I remember I remember the first time I shaved, and all I had was like very like little amount like on my upper lip, and like I shaved it off, and it was not a lot at all. Mm-hmm. And after I shaved it, I was like, oh my gosh, I look so different. Like, <laughs> I look so weird. Like, what the heck? And everyone, like my family, they said, you don't look, you don't look different at all. Like, what are you talking about? But I don't know. It was kind of funny. Hmm. Um, okay. When was your first time out of the country? I would, that, my first time out of the country was, I went to, I was, it was in Mexico. I went to a mission mm. trip in Mexico when I was in, I was only in third grade, but oh, dang. I was, I went with my dad. Well, okay. So how about out of the continental U.S.? Like, uh. Yeah. So that would definitely be my, my honeymoon was the first time out and mm. we went to Ireland. Okay. So that was my first time and we spent f- 15 days in Ireland. Mm. Nice. It was awesome. So my first time out of the country was was also Mexico. Much different than your experience, though. Um, Puerto Vallarta, Mexico. Nice. Luxury resort. Yeah. Yeah. And then... I haven't um, done those yet. That'd be fun. It. I mean, it was incredible. Well, my, my family still goes every year. They just don't invite me anymore. <laughs> um, but uh, first time out of the, like, the Americas um, was um, my Europe trip. So we went to That's Italy. Yeah. It was, yeah. How long ago was that? Like, uh, uh, over a year ago. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, that was my first time out. Um, and so we went to like Italy, Prague and oh, um, Amsterdam. Amsterdam. Yeah, yeah. That's funny. Thanks for remembering for me. Yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah, that was my first time out of the Americas, the continent. Nice. Um, and then last question, 
When was the first time you farted in front of your wife? Oh my goodness. <laughs> well, me and my my <laughs> my wife and I, we've been together since we were 15. So we've been together for almost I'm 28 now, so we've been together for almost 13 years now. Mm. And That's a long time. I definitely farted in front of her before we got married. Oh, well, yeah, that'd be weird if you didn't. Yeah, because so... Because dating for so freaking long? I think it was... I mean, it was probably... In, I can't recall. I've farted in front of her so many times. <laughs> that, so it was probably when I was 15, honestly. I, I just shouldn't have asked. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. We just... I was I was comfortable with it. It's all good. <laughs> I've known I've known Robert's wife for just as long, and I yeah. probably farted in front of her, like... Oh, God. Just as many, not as many times, <laughs> but like at the same time, like probably during the same time, um, Jessica and Raina were probably both there. So, <laughs> so sorry, man. But it wasn't like, it wasn't something that you were like, I think this is okay. And then you intentionally, it's probably a slip up, right? Yeah. I mean, I wasn't like <laughs> pushing one out to like yeah. fart in front of them. This will get Jessica to fall in <laughs> Yeah. I really like this girl. Maybe, maybe I should fart in front of her. <laughs> what about you? When was the first time you Oh, did? it was definitely an accident. Um, so, uh, when, before my wife and I, we got married, uh, we started, we were dating for like a, only a month and then she left for college. Um, so we were the first part of majority of the first part of our relationship was long distance. And I'm sure it was a time I was visiting her and it was an accident. And so, I oh, probably, I think I've heard this. I don't remember exactly when it would have been. Um, I'm just sure. Like, I know what my face would have been. I'm just like, like, <laughs> like sometimes just like it a, happens. Oh, man. oh crap. Like, <laughs> You know, a shocked face, and then you kind of just look at them. <laughs> I, I, what did you think of that? <laughs> you going to break up with me? Yeah. <laughs> but, yeah, no. And so that was probably it. I don't know. That's don't funny. Know that one. Yeah. Yeah. Sometime in college. Yeah. Yeah, I was in college. Yeah. But anyways, enough about stinky stuff and more about good smelling stuff. Yeah, this, this smells really good. <laughs> um, first time drinking this beer. First time beer from this brewery for me, and um, I will say as as I kept drinking it, the the mouthfeel started feeling less heavy mm. to me. Okay, like it started getting more. I mean, it was it was medium heavy at first, and yeah. I think it is kind of it was just lowering for me. So. Yeah, yeah, was, yeah, I agree. It's more a little more medium. Um, the flavor profile hasn't changed too much. Um, mm-hmm. Still just citrus, a lot of tangerine. A little bit of orange. Very smooth, and I will say... It's not as sweet to me. Uh, no. Also, so I guess it has changed in that sense, but the the upfront flavors that are just, you know, really taking over is the citrus, and that's still consistent. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, I think that the can says that it should you should get a little bit of... Uh, yeah, coconut, I don't get any. Which isn't... A, I mean, I, I love coconut. Uh, and everyone, like you said, people taste stuff differently. Yeah. I'm sure some... like So there's people who have tried this, and... You know, maybe got a decent amount of coconut. I'm not getting any. I still think it's really good beer, though. It is really yeah. good. If you're into citrusy beers, this is super citrusy. Yeah, citrusy and... Smooth. And I, I like... Yeah, very smooth. I liked your description. Um, like, kind of like the orange peel uh, for the aroma as well. Like, mm-hmm. I definitely get that. And kind of like... I will say, like, I kind of do taste, like, grapefruit. But anyways, go follow us on the social media platforms. Mm-hmm. Um, all the major ones. We're really active on there. And then subscribe on YouTube. And then subscribe on the podcast. On podcast. You can do that. Yeah. And then rate us, please. Um, we want your honest feedback. We love to hear from you, um, whether that be on social media, on YouTube, in comments, or, you know, or I don't think you can message on podcast, right? I don't think so. You yeah. can leave a review, but. Okay. Well, you can review us on the podcast at least, at least. And <laughs> and I did, I did research and the podcast is on every single platform. Okay. Awesome. Every single one, like even yeah. like the different apps and stuff. So no excuses. Us. No excuses. No excuses. <laughs> Anyways, go follow us, go subscribe. Please do. And review or reach out. Um, we'd love to hear from you. Um, also, if you have any beers that you recently had that you thought were, you know, really great um, and that you think that we should review and try, let us know. We'd love to uh, get our hands on some Mm -hmm. and hear your feedback. For sure. So we're going to keep on drinking this. Have a great rest of your day. Yeah, have a great rest of your day. Cheers. Cheers.